Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about uh, flap, trap, flap track fairings and also the area rule and they're kind of interconnected uh, as I'll show you but they're technically two different topics but I'll go over them both in this video. Um, okay, so on a lot of commercial planes you'll see that there's there are these things underneath the wing that you can see from behind the wing um, that look like little canoes. Um, and those are what we call flap track fairings. Uh, you don't normally see them on smaller planes or business jets as much because the flap mechanisms that they use are are simpler. And I'll go over flaps in another video on just flaps. Um, but in larger jets where the flap mechanisms are more complicated because they need higher lifts so they can land slower uh, at slower speeds and use up less runway distance, then you end up having these really complicated flap mechanisms and a lot of the um, a lot of the mechanisms are actually um, would be sticking out of the wing uh, and in the actual flow going past the, the plane in the wing. Um, so what they need to do is to make the plane more aerodynamic they put these things called flap track fairings on um, which smooths out the flow and covers up all these weird linkages and, and gears and, and screws um, that would otherwise be uh, in the flow. So on this wing, on top view of the wing here, uh, this is the aileron out here, uh, and you can see the flaps here and here, and then the flap track fairings are these things. So this is the top view, so you only see the edges of them, or the ends of them sticking out. On the bottom they continue up into here. Um, <clears throat> so that's the top view. Here's the side view. Uh, this is not drawn anything like it really looks like. Uh, but this is just to give you an indication of why they, why they're here. So in this case, there's a, this is a double slotted flap because uh, there's two slots here. So this is the wing, and then you have these two flap uh, pieces that extend back and down off of the wing. And in order to uh, connect these two pieces to the actual wing, uh, you need to have these linkages. And the flap mechanism, the flap track fairing, covers up all this mechanical stuff that happens in here that allows the um, that allows the flaps to to move along along the along the rail and move back and down. Okay, so that's 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 what flap track fairings do. So how is the area rule um, connected to flap track fairings? So when we're flying in commercial planes, uh, we're in that region uh, in the transonic region, essentially where um, we're getting close to the critical Mach number, uh, like I described in my critical Mach number video, uh, which I'll post in the comments. Um, so in this range, what happens is as you approach Mach 1, so this is a plot of the wing drag coefficient versus the Mach number. Uh, so this is kind of the transonic range where we're, it's usually from like 0.85, Mach number 0.85, and then a little bit and up to here. So. Uh, as we in, as we're in the transonic range, what happens is the wave the wave drag uh, increases in this range. So uh, wave drag is obviously bad. Um, any type of drag is bad, but wave drag in this case, when you're in the transonic regime, is bad. Um, so what happened was a guy named Richard Whitcomb, uh, who worked at uh, well, what was called NACA, which is now NASA. Um, he did some tests uh, with different shapes in transonic flows. So these are the different these are some different shapes that he was testing uh, for wave drag. And so this one is just a this normal kind of bullet shaped body, and this had a certain wave drag. And then what he did was he added wings to the uh, to the bullet shaped body, and this increased the wave drag uh, significantly. And then when he changed the shape so that uh, there were these. There were no more wings, but there were bulges on it. But the volume, uh, the bulges added the same amount of volume to the cross section that the wings did. These two shapes had the same, uh, the same wave drag. And then what he did was he decreased the area of the, the fuselage of the bullet-shaped body and added wings to it. And that was found to have approximately the same wave drag as the original bullet shaped body um, because it had the same cross-sectional area. Because if you decrease the fuselage area and, you, and then you add wings on, um, you'd get the same area distribution uh, as this 
area or volume distribution as, as the regular bullet shaped body. So, um, so then I guess I should mention the, the Sears Hawk body uh, is important because this is the body or this is the shape that has the um, that has the lowest wave drag for um, along its along, uh, for for its shape along its length. So it looks kind of like a cigar, I guess. Um, and this is a plot of the uh, cross-sectional area versus the fuselage distance or fuselage station, whatever you're used to calling it. So as you can see, we don't have, there's no area um, at the tip because it's just a point. And then as the area increases, it smoothly increases up to a maximum at the middle of it and then decreases again and it's symmetrical about the center line. So the Sears Hawk body has the minimum wave drag. So when you're designing a plane, you like to have the uh, area or volume uh, distribution uh, look like the Sears Hawk body. So where do flap track bearings come into play here? Um, if on commercial planes, you, know, you start out with the nose and the area, and as you move back along the plane, the area increases. And then when you get to the wing, um, when you get to the wing, the the area increases uh, more because you're adding the um, your volume or area. I just kind of use it interchangeably, but the volume, I guess, um, increases more. But then once you get towards the back of the wing, um, or down past the front of the wing, towards the back of the wing, the the wing narrows and the volume decreases. So what the flap track bearings can actually do is help with the help um, smooth out the the volume distribution uh, as you move from forward to backward on the plane. Um, and so that was a uh, discussion on flat track bearings in the area. Uh, thank you for watching.